Hello class, in this video, we will be covering 7.7 .7, um, and there are 10 questions in this particular section. Now I've been messing around with my um, printer. I do not work on campus during the summer because I'm off contract. Um, so I'm technically not working a full-time job right now. I'm working a part-time job teaching summer classes, if that makes any sense, okay? <laughs> it's just funny because my part-time job and my full-time job are the same job. It's just the way I get paid is a little different. Um, and when I get paid is different. So with all that said, I've been trying this whole summer to get my printer to work because it has been a pain in the butt to be writing all these problems all this time. And I finally figured everything out. I finally, you know, MacGyvered a little piece inside of there, <laughs> makeshift a little piece inside of there to get it to run, but it ran. So now I can print them. I, I, I hope to keep continuing to print them. Um, if I need to buy more ink, I can do that. But this is so much nicer than having to write everything by hand. Not to mention, you know, it saves me time to do all this. So, so I've been trying to get that printer to work and I finally got it. It's an old, old, old giant printer. I just don't find the sense in buying a whole new one for hundreds of dollars when I can just fix the one I got. So, um, but that's just me. Some people don't even want the hassle of trying to take it apart and put it back together again. So, moving on. This section only has 10 problems, so we're gonna try to get through them. And it is talking about the cost of home ownership. So in there, I did notice that there are, we still use this because all the loans that we're gonna talk about are fixed loans. Um, we don't really talk about the um, the ones that where the rates can change, okay? The flexible loans. We don't, we're not talking about those in this particular section. I'm trying to keep it pretty easy, okay? Flexible loans, you can't really predict because they're flexible, meaning that your rate can change from year to year. And so your monthly payments can change from year to year. And my my mother, well, not technically my mother-in-law because I'm not married, but yes, future mother-in-law, um, that happened to her. She had a variable rate or a flexible rate. And then what happened is, is that the rate went up and then all of a sudden her payment was higher. Um, and so then she went ahead and refinanced and got a fixed loan so that you know what your payment is gonna be each year. Um, but anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Let me um, go on and get this this uh, section started. Okay, so number one says the biggest single purchase that most people make in their lives is the purchase of a home. Most homeowners have to finance the purchase with the installment loan. Assume you have found your new home and it costs $245,000. You need to have a 20% down payment. Determine 20% down payment and the amount of the mortgage loan. Assume any other costs will be taken care of at settlement and not incorporated into the loan. So if I want to figure out what my down payment is, I need to take the cost of the home times that 20% down payment amount. Now I literally typed in 245,000 times 20% and the calculator told me it was $49,000. So how much am I, what kind, how much of a loan do I need to take out? Well, if I'm paying this as a down payment, it is not gonna be included in the loan amount. So I take the $245,000 and I subtract my down payment. This is the amount of money that I need to get a loan for, okay? Um, now, number two is a little bit more lengthy, but number two says the price of a home is $144,000. The bank requires a 20% down payment and three points at the time of closing. The cost of the home is financed with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 9.5%. So part A says find the required down payment. So remember, you're going to take the cost of the home times the percentage for the down payment, which gives you the down payment amount. Then it says find the amount of the mortgage. So you take the cost of the home minus your down payment, and this is what you need to get a loan for. Then it says how much must be paid for the three points at closing? 
whenever they talk about your points, it could be one point, two points, three points, four points, five points, so on and so forth. Each point is 1% of the loan amount, okay? Since I'm talking about three points, that means I need to be paying 3% of the loan amount, not amount, amount. So that means this is the loan amount. So it's 115200 times 3%. I typed that in exactly the way it is on paper and the calculator told me it was 3,456. Now part D says find the monthly payment excluding escrow taxes and insurance because we know there's some of you guys that know a little bit more about purchasing a home than just the basics and so they have to keep mentioning these things like um what was the other one assume this one said assume any other costs will be taken care of at settlement and not incorporated into the loan because someone's going to be like well <laughs> If you do need to pay this and you need to pay that, you need to factor that in. And so they make those statements so that you don't make things more complicated. Um, now, and so that you know that you have all the information that you need to calculate what they're wanting you to calculate. So for the monthly payment, I am using that payment formula. Remember here, fixed loan um, payment formula. So the amount of the loan that I'm getting is this value. There's my percentage. I'm doing monthly payments. One minus one plus 9.5 over 12, 9.5% over 12. And then the negative 12 times the number of years when it said it was a 30 year fixed rate. So it's 30 years. I typed all of this in the calculator and it uh, I rounded to the nearest dollar as it said. So that was 969. Then it says find the total interest over the 30 years. Well, if this is what I'm paying per month times 12 months per year times the 30 years, this is the total amount that I paid. So if I take the amount that I paid minus the amount that I borrowed, this is how much interest I am paying over those 30 years. It's a lot, right? It's like two times the amount that you borrowed. They get you with all that interest. That's why they always tell you, you'll, you want to have a down payment. Um, you may not necessarily need it, but you're going to want it because otherwise you pay out the wazoo for interest. Um, and that is basically the reason why I haven't bought my own home. I mean, I'm in a rental right now, but. And this is the first time I've ever actually been in a house because I've always lived in apartments my whole life. so. It's a step up for me, <laughs> maybe not for everyone, but for me, it's a step up. Um, <laughs> so one day, one day, I'll get my own home. So number three says the price of a condominium is $144,000. The bank requires 5% down payment and one point at the time of closing. The cost of the condominium is financed with a 30 year fixed rate mortgage at 7%. So it's basically the same problem as the previous one, except they're giving us different values. So we're basically plugging everything in the same exact way with different numbers, okay? It's kind of just another practice problem of number, number two. So first find the required down payment. So we take the $144,000, we multiply it by the 5% down payment, and we end up with this 7,200. Then what we do is we want to find the amount of the mortgage. You take the house cost minus what you're paying down. And then this is the amount of the actual loan. Um, and here it says you have only one point at closing. So that means you only need to do the loan amount times 1%, which is this value. Then to find the monthly payment, it's going to be the loan amount um, times the rate over 12, one minus one plus the rate over 12 to the power negative 12 times the 30 years. I typed all of that in the calculator and it gave me, um, it rounded to the nearest dollar and it gave me 910. Then I took for the next section, it says find the total cost of interest over the 30 years. So we take the 910 per month times 12 months per year times 30 years. That means this is paid. 
So this is the total amount that I paid. So you take the total amount that you paid minus what you borrowed, and this is the amount of interest. Okay, so, and that's a comma, not a period. Now, number four. Um, I'm trying to make sure I include all my steps. I think I need to zoom out just a little tiny bit so you can get that last line. Okay, so it says the price of the small cabin is $45,000. The bank requires 5% down payment. The buyer is offered two mortgage options, 20 year fixed at 7% or 30 year fixed at 7%. Calculate the amount of interest paid for each option. How much does the buyer save in interest with the 20 year option? So remember it does talk about the down payment. So that I need to remove that from the value of the cabin because that won't be included in my loan since I'm paying it off right off the top, right? So 45,000 times 5% is this value. So $45,000 minus that down payment gives me this value, okay? So then my payment would be the amount of loan that I need to get times my rate over 12, one minus parentheses, one plus 7% over 12, raised to the power negative 12 times 20. I typed all of this in the calculator and rounded to the nearest dollar, and I got 331. Now, for the 30 year, everything is exactly the same. The only thing that changed is the 20 year to the 30 year because they were both at 7%. So I typed all of this in the calculator and I got 284. So then what I did was I tried to calculate the amount of interest that I would have to pay for each of those two options. So for the first one, it's 331 per month times 12 months per year times 20 years, which gave me this amount paid total. So total paid. Then I'm gonna take this amount of the loan out. And so that gives me this amount of interest. Same thing with the 284 per month times 12 months per year times 30 years. This is the amount that was paid altogether. This is the amount of the loan. So this is the amount of interest. And it wants to know how much I would have saved by going with the lower one. So you take the larger value minus the smaller value and you get this value that has been saved. So let's see the next one. We have number five. So number five says the price of a home is $150,000. The bank requires a 15% down payment. The buyer is offered two mortgage options. This is literally the same problem, just more practice, okay? The buyers uh, offer two mortgage options, 15-year fixed at 6.5% and 30-year fixed at 6.5%. Calculate the amount of interest paid for each option. How does the buyer save an in interest with the 15-year? How much does the buyer save an in interest with the 15-year option? So take the $150,000, figure out what your 15% down payment is going to be. Then take that amount from the $150,000 home cost and you get this as your loan amount. Okay, um, I think they call it the mortgage. This is what the loan is, okay? Um, so what I did was to find the payment for the 15 years is I plugged in that loan amount, 6.5% over 12, one minus one plus 6.5% over 12, and then raise to the negative 12 times the number of years. And for the first option, it is 15 years. So I type all of that in a calculator, round to the nearest dollar, and I get 1111. So the next one is the exact same bits of information. Percentages are the same. The only thing that's changing is it's not a 15 year loan, it's now a 30 year loan. So we type all of that in and we get a payment of $806. So it says, so you know, Critical thinking here. Yeah, I would pay less interest, but do I have the amount of money to pay $1,100 each month or is $800 more in my budget, right? So there's always reasons of why you would go with one versus the other, but they're not asking you about all that. They're just telling you which one has um, the less interest, okay? 
So we're going to calculate. So for the this value or this payment times 12 payments per year times 15 years gives me this amount total paid versus the other option is 806 times 12 months times 30 years gives me this amount. So these are both the total amounts that I have um, paid. And I actually, you end up getting the same answer. Look, I'm gonna leave that there. But this is not what I should have been doing. So what I should have been doing is I should have been subtracting the loan amount so that you could get the amount of interest. So 199980 minus 127500 is 72480 minus 127500. So this is the interest. 290160 minus 127500. Now this one is 72,000, whereas this one is 162,000. So if I wanna find how much I saved, I'm gonna take that guy's interest minus this guy's interest, and I'm going to get 90180, which is the exact same value that I got here, okay? Um, the reason why it worked out, even though I didn't you know, find the actual interest, is because if this is a total payment and this is a total payment, both of them already include the value of the loan. So when I subtract them, they take out that value of the loan um, altogether. So I didn't have to technically do all of this. I could have just subtracted these, big one minus small one, and you would have got the same answer, okay? But to be consistent with what I did in the last problem, I, I made some changes right here, okay? So for, let me give this thing a second. It needs to, there it goes. Okay, so for number six, it says, in terms of paying less interest, which is more economical um, for a 220,000 mortgage? A 30-year fixed rate at 7.5% or a 20-year fixed rate at 7%? And then how much is saved in interest? So um, I did run out of space here. So I did the payment amount for the first option, which was 7.5% for 30 years. I plugged all that in and I got this as my monthly payment. Then I did the second option, which was 7%, but at 20 years. And I plugged in all of this into the calculator and I ended up with um, 1706. So then what I did down here was for the 30 year, it's that monthly payment times 12 times 30, which gives me this total paid. Then for this 20 year option, I took the 1706 times 12 times 20 and ended up with this total paid. Then for the interest, I took the total paid minus what I got the loan for. So this is the interest. Total paid minus the loan. This is my interest. And then if I wanna figure out how much was saved, take the larger amount. And I know that because I have to put the commas. Um, the larger amount minus the smaller amount. And this is how much you save. Now notice that the directions did say something like uh, round to the nearest thousand dollars. So, as ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, that two is not enough to make this go up. So it stays a four. All the digits before it stay the same, but all the digits after it turn to zero. And then anything after the decimal point would all just go away. Okay. And so then um, that is the value that I typed in there. The buyer will save uh, $144,000 in interest. Okay, and then it says, which one is more economical? Well, which one do you pay the least amount in, right? The one we paid the least amount was in the 20 year loan. So that's why I selected the 20 year loan. Okay, moving on to number seven. Let me see if I can get it all in the screen. There we go. So for number seven, it says, consider the following pair of mortgage loan options for $150,000 mortgage. 
which mortgage loan has the larger total cost? Closing costs plus the amount paid for points plus the total cost of interest. By how much? So mortgage A is a 15-year fixed at 12.25% with closing costs of 1,500 and one point, okay? And then mortgage B is a 15-year fixed rate at 11.25% with closing costs and a 1,500, um, closing costs of 1,500 and a four points. So at first I calculated the payments, um, then I figured out how much the interest was um, since I need to know the closing costs, the amounts for points, and the interest. So I found the payments, then I found the, uh, that, then I did the closing costs plus the points plus the interest. Okay, so let me walk you through all of that. So for option A, um, it, they're both the same value of home, so 150000 but option A had 12.25%, um, so 12.25% for 15 years. The other option had 11.25%, um, but still 15 years. So these are the two payment amounts. So I took the payment for option A, multiplied it by 12 months, and multiplied it by 15 years, and I got this amount total paid, okay? Minus the amount of the loan gives me this amount in interest for option A. For option B, I took that payment amount, times 12 months per year, times 15 years, and that gave me this amount total paid. Minus the amount of the loan gives me this amount of interest, okay? Now, um, if I wanna know the total amount that they have to pay, for mortgage A, it would be um, the closing costs, which were 1,500, plus one point times 150,000, that's the amount of the loan, plus the amount of interest that I have to pay. So I typed all of this in the calculator with the parentheses and the percent included, and it gave me 181,320. Then for mortgage B, that one also has a closing cost of 1,500, but that one had four points. So 4% times the loan amount, plus my interest that I calculated. Um, I typed in all of that exactly the way it is in the calculator, and it gave me 168,720. So then, uh, between these two, this is the one with the larger amount. So mortgage A is the one with the larger. So between the two options, I had to click the top option. And how much more is it? Well, take the larger one minus the smaller one, and you'll get how much more you have to pay with mortgage A versus mortgage B. Okay, last three problems here. So let's see number eight. And it looks like I have to go down here to a little box when I get there. I just ran out of room. So for number eight, the cost of a home is financed with $180,000 four year fixed rate mortgage at 3%. Find the monthly payment and the total interest for the loan. So we already know how to do both of those things. We've been doing it like a million times already, it feels like, right? So the payment amount is going to be the loan amount times the rate over 12, one minus one plus the rate over 12 to the power negative 12 times the number of years, which is 40. Then when I type all of that in there, I did round to the nearest cent. So I got this. So then I figured out um, how much, or that was the monthly payment part. But then to figure out the interest, I have to figure out how much I paid and then how much of that is interest. So I did the monthly payment times 12 months per year times 40 years and gave me this amount. And then I minus the loan amount and that gave me this amount in interest. Okay, so that is this second box, okay? Now the table is a little interesting, okay? So it says, fill out the loan, amor amor I cannot say that word, Amort mm, amortization, amortization, I can't say it. Anyway, <laughs> schedule for the first three months of the mortgage below. So remember how we calculate interest. Interest is um, the principal times the rate times the time. So for this first payment, okay, you're taking... 18,000 times 3%, right? Because the loan's a 3% loan, times 
one over 12 because it's only one month out of the 12 months per year, okay? So it's just one payment, one 12th, and I get $450. So remember, your monthly payment is 644.37. So if I take out the $450, this is just interest. So my interest is $450, which means my principal is gonna be 194.37. And if that's my principal, then that is gonna get subtracted from my loan amount, which means I end up with this alone balance. Okay, this loan balance does not include um, a cured interest that could potentially accumulate. So then number two, remember my principal is not the same anymore. My principal is this now in month two, not the original 1800. So I took this value and I plugged it in there for P times 3% times one month out of 12 for the year. And that gave me this value. So this is the amount of interest I'm paying in month two. Notice it's a tiny bit less. So when I take that interest amount out of my monthly payment, this is the amount of principal that I'm paying. Notice it's a tiny bit more than the previous payment. So then if I take that interest payment out of the loan balance, I end up with this value as my new loan balance. Notice my balance is going down little by little, okay? Then for the last one, I went all the way down here. I took the previous loan balance times 3% times one over 12, and I got this value as my interest. Then I took that out from the payment that I'm paying each month, and I got this value for principal. And then I took that principal out of the loan amount, and I got this as my loan balance. So you do kind of, it kind of cascades. You have to keep using the previous, previous boxes here to move on to the next step, okay? Um, but then I do have those matching values as I did at the bottom. So let's go ahead and move to number nine. It says, advice for most financial advisors states to spend no more than 28% of one's gross monthly income for one's mortgage payment and to spend no more than 36% of one's gross monthly income for one's total monthly debt. Suppose a family has a gross annual income of $45,600. A, what is the maximum amount the family should spend each month on a mortgage payment? So we took $45,000 per year times one year over 12 months so that I could figure out how much I was doing per month, because remember it's 28% of the monthly income. So I have to do, essentially I have to do my yearly income divided by 12 months. Once I know that amount, that's my monthly income, then my monthly income can get multiplied by 25, 28%. So if I would have done four, five, six thousand divided by 12 monthly payments, this is my monthly budget, okay? My monthly income. Oh, I put way too many zeros. That's my monthly income, okay? Um, so if that's my monthly income, I'm gonna multiply that by 28% and you get this amount um, that should be your maximum mortgage payment. So you should not have a mortgage payment over um, $1,064. Now the maximum monthly total credit obligations should be, again, the amount of money you gross make a month times 36%. So again, this is how much I make, 3,800 per month times 36% is this value, 1,368. So then the last question says, the maximum amount that they should spend monthly on other debt. So other debt other than, um, than the, the mortgage. So here it says, if the family's monthly mortgage payment is 80% of the maximum they can afford. What is the maximum amount they should spend each month for all other debt, okay? So you're gonna take your, um, the amount, the mortgage payment, this is the maximum mortgage payment, okay? And it says 80% of the market, 80% of the maximum they can afford. So that's 80% times the maximum mortgage payment they can afford which gives me 851 and 20 cents. 
So then this is the maximum amount of credit obligations they can have. So take that maximum credit obligation minus what comes from the mortgage, and that leaves you with this amount for all other debt. So that includes everything. That includes your groceries, your gas, your you know, water and electric, your entertainment, absolutely everything, okay? Um, has to be within that 516. According to this um, model here that the financial advisors suggest, this is how they determine whether or not you qualify for a loan. Because if you don't make, this is not reasonable to pay for everything, your garbage, your, your electricity, your uh, water, your food. Um, if this is not reasonable amount, or even if that one's not, if any of these, okay, if you're asking for a loan that's going to cause a payment more than this, that's how they decide whether or not you can afford it. They're going based off of these images uh, or these percentages, which doesn't make sense because everybody budgets the way they want, right? Some people go out to the movies every other day, and some people don't ever go anywhere. They just stay at home all the time. So. I don't know why they do it the way they do it. But anyway, we're going based off of the information we have. So sacrifices, right? People make sacrifices in different areas. So someone might want a lesser value home because they want to spend more money on a monthly basis. Some people want, might want a nicer home and they don't plan to spend as much on a monthly basis. But both people have the same amount of income. It's all choices. So number 10 says, advice from most financial advisors states to spend no more than 28% of one's gross monthly income for one's mortgage payment and to spend no more than 36% of one's grossly income for one's uh, total monthly debt. If a family's gross annual income is 52800 Use appropriate computations to determine whether the family can afford a $200,000 20-year fixed rate mortgage at 5%. So the payment that they would have to make is 200,000 times 5% oh, compounded monthly, one minus one plus 5% over 12 to the negative 12 times 20 powers, which comes up with this as a monthly payment. Now, they make 52,800 a year. Um, so remember, you have to figure out how much that is in a month. So let's see, 52,800 zero, zero divided by 12 means they make this amount per month, okay? And if they're making that amount per month, we're gonna multiply that by 28%. And I get this amount. This is the maximum payment that they can make. But notice that the maximum payment is a little bit less than the monthly payment that they would need to make, okay? So since the actual payment is more than what they are advised to pay monthly, we're gonna actually select option D, which says the family cannot afford the, the mortgage because the monthly payment is greater than what they should pay each month. Um, and it's important to write that because I knew they couldn't afford it. So I crossed out these because these say they can afford it. So I knew it was option A or option B. But option D says that the monthly payment is less than what they can afford. And this is not um, less than what they can afford. If it were, then that would mean they could afford it, right? So it didn't make any sense. Um, but that is the end of this particular section. And I will see you guys in the next video.